Hey kids, oh, welcome to Stylus Rumble. I'm back from my super extended summer vacation. I didn't have been any forever, just for a little while. I ran back to the countryside where I belong and got all refreshed. So today we're gonna get into this. Uh, I just grabbed one of the scenes that I had comped in a previous episode. So if you wanna check out the water comp, I did that stuff. There's a video for that kicking around, but mostly there's just some cycles and stuff in here that I could utilize to help explain some of the things I wanna talk about today within the timeline. So today is going to be the, the timeline episode and I just want to kind of deep dive into it and talk about some of the features that I think get a little underutilized or maybe people don't even know that they're kicking around. So first of all, I do give the timeline a little bit of a hard time because I am a Harmony premium snob. So I use the network view for everything, all this rigging and compositing and stuff. All of this, I, I kind of stick over here a lot more. So the timeline, I neglect a little bit in my videos just because they don't work too much out of there unless I'm actually dealing with exposures and timing with animation. Even classical animation, you're just kind of shimmying here along your frames and drawing stuff in. So I don't utilize a lot of the tools that are in here that are it's kind of secret and and pretty useful so first any view that you right click in you're going to get a different window and this is a little bit snaggly for people who are new to the software because they'll right click and they'll go oh there's all this useful stuff and then later they'll try right clicking again and they can't find anything that they just used and they're like oh no but it had this cool feature and now it's disappeared forever oh no um so it's important to know that when you're using Harmony. Every window has its own little menu up here, like a drop down menu of useful things. This one's going to have different options because it's for this window. And the right click as well, whatever window you're in, it's going to give you a right click that is specifically tailored to the window that your cursor is hovering over. So within the timeline view, you've lots of really useful stuff about exposures and other timeliney sounding things. Boop. So here we've got a number of exposures. We can just select one drawing here, right click, and we can address the exposure of the drawing in here. This is really useful, particularly down here, this stuff to set exposure to one, two, three. So as an effects animator, I do a ton of hand-drawn stuff and I mostly work on ones because it's easier to just shimmy along your frames on ones and then I'll set it to twos. So here I'll set my exposure to one. Let me get rid of this uh, stuff and we can see it on ones. Let's actually use the whole ring. So I'm going to select all of this stuff, go to my exposure, expose on ones, and it's going to drag it back to the beginning here where it belongs. And so here it is on ones. Go. Now I can see this. Whee! So if that's too fast, I can change my exposure to twos. And usually if you're working in 2D animation, you're going to want things on twos. So you get used to working a little like double the speed on ones and then converting it to twos later. You can also convert it to threes or whatever you need. So let's say they want it twice as slow. They're like, you know, this is still too fast. What you can do is in between all these, like cut it in half and get your in-betweens done. And then you can convert all those ones to twos again. So I use that particular option a ton. Next thing within the exposure that I think is kind of a secret is that you can fill selection or sequence fill. So I'm going to just select an area, go to my exposure, and I'm going to fill the selection. And it's saying, what do you want to fill the selection with? So let's say two. So now it's filling it with number two in here, the, the second drawing within here. So if you need to expose a section here with a particular drawing, that's a quicker way to do it than say rifling through, especially this one, it's got a lot of tweens, so it goes up to 29. So you can select things quickly that way. Sequence fill is one I use a lot because I do cycle things. Um, because sneakily inside the sequence fill, first of all, you can just select a, an area and then you can fill it. So starting value is one, the increment is one, the hold is two. So this is going to put twos all along here. See, so the, it's incrementally going up one. So it goes from frame one to two to three, but it's holding it on twos. Hopefully that makes sense. So your starting value, you can say four 
and then two. So then it'll go four, six, eight, 12 as the drawings are named and it'll hold it every two frames. So it'll be first frame four or drawing named four. Then the next drawing two frames over will be frame six. Hopefully that makes sense. This I usually just keep on standard and I'll do ones if I'm animating on ones or twos if I'm animating on twos. And then you can cycle it we can cycle it and say five, and then it's gonna automatically create a cycle of five drawings across my screen. So this is great if you're using some of my cycling tips that I show in some of my effects videos where I did bubbles and stuff like that. I'll try to remember to link that one as well. Um, because you could preset how many drawings you want. If you say, okay, I wanna do a 12 frame cycle, I can slap down all those frames and now I can start animating without worrying of whether I'm going past my initial thought process there. So delete these drawings again. Another way it's really useful is with these guys here. I'm going to go to my X sheet for a second because the X sheet has a really useful tool and X sheet is another place that I really underutilize because it's got some really awesome features that just don't come up a lot in my daily life. And what I'm going to do in the X sheet is select this collection of drawings within my ripple ring. And again, you right click in here, you're getting a different menu than the other things. But right now I just want to go and deal with the drawings themselves. And I want to rename the drawings by the frame number that they're on. So one, three, five, seven, because it's on twos, it's doing that. I, you could put it on ones if you want it to be just ones. But now I've got my whole cycle going up to 27. Clear out everything. Beep. Now I've got my cycle going up to 27. Everything's named from one to 27 and it's all odd numbers. So if I wanted to just cycle this ring, I could just right click here, go to my exposure, sequence fill, and then I can tell it I want a cycle of 28 drawings because that's how long my cycle is. The starting value I would like to be one. The increment is two because it goes from one to three to five. It's only, it's using odd numbers, so my increment is two. And I would like them to be held two frames each. So now I say I want it the whole way across my screen and hit OK. And now everything is cycled perfectly. So this is so useful in the case where you have a lot of things that need to be cycled. Like Obviously, I could just copy the up to the end of my cycle here, control B, and then down here, it's giving me the option of pasting cycles, either normal, reverse, forward and reverse. So you could have something swing back and forth or reverse and forward if you wanted to swing back and forth this way. And I can say I want it in there 12 times, boop, and it's going to spread it out all the way across. So both of those are way, good ways to do it. You just have a little bit more control with the sequence fill and it works over a number of different things. So if I had 10 or 15 different drawings that were using a five frame cycle, say I had to build a character out of cycles, I could select the entire thing and then use my sequence fill to fill in all the correct cycles along there. These are useful things. Um, a lot of these things are also available from the right click menu here. So we have paste special that'll give you your control B. You can paste special again. So once you have the thing you like paste special, you can control shift B and it'll paste it over and over again. Paste cycle. So it can give you the option here. The number of cycles, I would like 12, the type of cycle take normal. So it's a little bit of a shortcut from going through the full paste special window. Delete, and we don't talk about lip sync because that is just jacked up. I'm gonna have to go to 15 to talk about a few of the new things that have come in that are super useful. So right here, we have a thumbnail thing, which may or may not be useful to you. It looks like a little alien face. I'm not sure, but it's, it's right next to these dudes here where you can view thumbnails if that's a thing you like to do. But more importantly than that, like, cause who cares about thumbnails? I mean, you've got thumbnails everywhere. The coolest thing is this yellow red movie thing feature. I don't want to see these anymore. They're bothering me. I just want my little frames. Okay. So here, if you move the red one, you're going to extend the frame and overwrite all the things that come after it. So let me just do that again. So I grab, see there's a yellow box, there's a red box. 
drag your red box and it's overwriting things. If you drag the yellow box, it's going to push the other drawings along the timeline. This is amazing because you have the option because certain versions of Toon Boom are like pushy and certain ones are overwritey and some they're a little bit confusing. Like here, I don't have any options. If I push this guy over, it's dragging the thing like past the other drawing. So 13's here, 15's here, and now 13's just moved beyond that. So in 14, you have no options here. If you drag this guy over here, it's just going to pull, like, here's 15, here's 13, and it's just dragging it past. So I can pull it over here, and then it just automatically exposes to the end because it feels like it. Um, if you pull this one, you can see it just automatically filled that in and I, it's dragging the, the former frame behind it. You don't really have a lot of decision making there. So I spend, I do a lot of like dragging something over and then having to turn it off. But this is neat. I like this option because now I can pull it all and push it all or I can overwrite and overwrite and it's just it's such a good little sneaky feature i didn't even know this was here in 15. very happy with that sorry 14 you don't get your draggy special feature <laughs> oh it's doing what i want so another uh the last thing i'm gonna go over in the timeline view and there's tons more stuff in here like really it's just a matter of going in and actually taking the time to read some of these because all your view stuff's in here you can insert bones and cameras all that stuff through here you can affect your layers. You can duplicate layers, merge layers, add your synced layers. Things like that are kind of sneaking around on my channel in places. Um, the last thing I'm going to kind of touch on, though, is the display options down here. Let me just pull them up to where my camera is. No, you're going to have to go further than that. So we've got the normal view mode, selection only mode, and view tagged layers. You can also get through to those down here in your views. All of those are here. And this is also where you're going to be able to tag things. Boop. All right, so we've got our normal view mode. That's the one you usually use. Selection only mode. So if I choose this, whatever I select, that's what's going to show up in my timeline view. It's good if you've got just a ton of stuff and you want a little bit to just reduce what you're looking at down here, but it is a little problematic, I find, making sure that you're selected on things and then fudging around with them. And it, there's a lot of back and forth. Um, a little bit better than that, though, is the view tagged layers, which a lot of juniors don't know exists. So let me just go back to normal view. I'm going to take my ring and remember, right click depends on where your mouse is. So Timeline has a right click on this side and it also has a right click on this side and they're going to give you different options. So I'm going to select the two ring layers, the peg and the drawing here, right click, and it gives me the option to tag. I can timeline tag, timeline untag, untag all, stuff like that. So this, I'm just going to timeline tag it and it gives a little asterisk in your view here. So now when I switch to view tag layers, it's only going to give me these two. This is great if you have a complicated selection that you would like to isolate and then go back and forth to because you can just refer to your tagged layers. And then once you want to untag everything, as you saw in here, you've got untag all and it's going to untag everything, even if you don't have it selected. So that was a little dry, but hopefully you guys have learned a little bit of stuff. If nothing else, like be excited about this. Whoa. Whoa. Because <laughs> that made me really happy. It's going to help my life. So much that tiny thing in the, in the 15. But just being able to paste cycles is really good. Uh, oftentimes I'm, I'm having to fix cycles that just get broken regularly. And it's very easy to fix a cycle if you know that the last frame in the cycle, you know the increments, you know the hold. You can very easily fix your broken cycle effects. So that's it. If you have any topics you'd like for me to address, please leave your questions and comments down below. I'd like, I wouldn't mind doing a video that was, uh, like Q and A's are really fun. So if you have a, why is my harmony doing blank? That'd be a good question to leave down below. Cause I often get those emails or phone calls. Why is my harmony copying the former keyframe onto the later keyframe? Sometimes I, you know, there's so many little things that harmony does 
So let me know what your harmony is doing to you and I'll try and show you guys why it is doing the thing. So like, share, subscribe, all those things internet people ask you to do. And I'll see you next week because I'm back. I'm back. Wee. I'm okay. I'm not injured. Thanks for asking though, people who have asked me if I'm okay. I'm okay.